Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial on sampling methods. In the last video on population versus census versus sample, you looked at the advantages and disadvantages of a census or sample. In this video, we'll be looking at sampling methods a little bit more. So let's start with some basic vocabulary associated with sampling. So what is a sample? Well, a sample is a selection of observations taken from a subset of the population which is used to find out information about the population as a whole. Now we know what a sample is, let's look at some more keywords starting with random sampling. Now, random sampling is where every member of the population has an equal chance of being selected. Random sampling uses sampling units, and a sampling unit is named or numbered to form a list and that list is called a sampling frame. There are three types of random sampling. We have simple random sampling, systematic sampling, and stratified sampling. So let's have a look at simple random sampling. First of all, simple random sampling means we need to have a sampling frame, usually a list of items, and each item is given a number or name where the number or name is chosen at random. Each item has an equal chance of being chosen. So now we've gone through some definitions, let's have a look at some simple random sampling examples and some sampling frames. So let's have a look at this spinner. You can see we have the names equally placed on our spinner and the spinner is spun the required number of times to get our sample. It's nice in theory, but it's not very practical, but is a good example of simple random sampling and a sample frame. A second way is to number or name the population and put those names or numbers in a hat, ensuring not to see the names and then selecting the number of names according to the sample. This is quite a common form of random sampling. Lastly, and my favourite, is to give each member of the population a number, from, for example, one to how many people there are in the population. Then we use a calculator or a number generator to randomly select our sample. If the number repeats, we simply ignore and then select the next random number. So I'm just going to show you how we can generate our random numbers using our calculator. Hopefully you can see above the decimal point there are two types of random number generator. The first being on the left, which is in yellow, so to access it you press the shift. Now this generates any random number, including decimals. The second random generator is just generating integers. That's what we want because we've labeled our population with an integer. So to access those integers, we press alpha and then that decimal point. This brings up our random integer generator. Now let's put the range of numbers that we've labeled our population. So you can see in my example, I've labeled my population from one to 18. So all I need to do is press one, and then I have to select my comma by pressing shift and bracket, which then I input the 18. So what I've done is I've told my calculator to randomly generate whole numbers between one and 18. Now I simply press equals and this generates all those random integers between 1 and 18. And remember, if a number repeats, we simply ignore it and move on to the next number. These three methods of simple random sampling are called lottery sampling and are really clear methods where every member of the population has an equal chance of being selected. Moving on to our next random sampling, let's have a look at systematic sampling. Now, systematic sampling means the required elements or items are chosen at regular intervals from an ordered list. So let's have a look at this population. Looking in this population, we have 18 people and I want a sample of six. This means to conduct our systematic sampling, I'm going to divide my 18 by six. So this means every third person will be selected. So firstly, we need to put our people or items in alphabetical order. This is because the definition of systematic sampling states I have to have an ordered list. Then, using a simple random sampling method, for example, a spinner, let's identify our starting person. Here, the spinner identifies Ali. So from here, I'm going to select 
every third person. So starting with Ali, selecting the next third person will be Charles. Then the next third person will be Dexter. The next third person would be Fatima. The next third person would be Max. The next third person will be Sylvester. So you can see I've created a systematic sample where I've chosen every third person from randomly starting, in this case, with Ali. This gives me a total sample of six people, which is what I wanted. Lastly, let's have a look at stratified sampling. So stratified sampling is where the population is divided into mutually exclusive strata or mutually exclusive groups and a random sample is taken from each. Now there is a formula that you have to remember. The number in the sampled stratum, which is singular for strata or group, is equal to the number in the group or stratum over the number in the population multiplied by the sample size. So let's have a look at stratified sampling in this example. Well, here in the example it states we've got 85 workers in our team and we want to ask a sample of 16 if they're happy in the workplace. It's thought that the different age groups will have different opinions. Now there are 46 people aged between 20 and 30 years old, there's 29 people aged between 31 to 45 years old and there are 10 people aged 46 or over. And we're asked to calculate, well, how many would be selected from each age range in a stratified sample? So to do this, let's apply our formula. Let's look at the people aged between 20 to 30 years of age first. Well, we know there's 46 of people aged between 20 to 30 out of a total population of 85. Multiplied by my sample of 16 gives me 8.658823, etc. Now we can't get a decimalized person, so we're going to round to give me a sample of nine people are needed aged between 20 to 30 years of age. Next, let's have a look at our 31 to 45 year olds. Well, we know there's 29 people aged between 31 and 45. We divide it by the population and multiply by 16. Same again, we get 5.4588, so we've got a decimal answer, and we can't get a decimalized person, so we have to round. This gives us a sample of five people are needed between the age of 31 to 45 years old. Lastly, let's have a look at, our, at the group of people aged 46 and over. Well, we know there are 10 people aged 46 or over, out of the population of 85, multiplied by our sample. This gives us 1.8823, etc, etc, but we can't get a decimalized person, so we round. This means we need to sample two people aged 46 years or over. It's important to note that once we have a number of people that we want to sample from each stratum, we have to use a random sampling method to select these people from their strata. It's always important to go through the advantages and disadvantages of any sampling method. So let's start with looking at the advantages of simple random sampling. First of all, it's free from bias. It's cheap and easy for small populations and small samples, where each sampling unit has a known equal chance. Disadvantages are, well, it's not really suitable for big populations and a sampling frame is needed. For systematic sampling, the advantages are it's quick and simple, and it is suitable for big populations and big samples. But a disadvantage is a sampling frame is needed, and it can induce bias if the sampling frame is not random. Lastly, stratified sampling. Some advantages are that it reflects the population structure, and it really does guarantee proportional representation of each group within the population. But the disadvantages are, well, the population has to be split into distinct strata and it's not suitable for big populations. And same again, a sampling frame is needed. So now we know the different types of random sampling. Let's have a look at a past exam question. Here the question states that a sixth form college has 84 students in year 12 and 56 students in year 13 and the head teacher selects a stratified sample of 40 students stratified by their year group. Now we're asked to describe how this sample could be taken and it's three marks. See if you can give it a go and press pause if you need.
Well, firstly, it's important to label each year group and then sample. We know that for year 12, there are 84 students out of a total of 140, and we multiply this by our sample size to give us 24 students need to be sampled from year 12. For year 13, we know there's 56 out of the 140. Multiplied by our sample size means we need to sample 16 students from year 13. Well, how are we going to do this? Well, first things first, each student in year 12 will get a number between 1 and 84 because we know there's 84 students. Then, using a random number generator on our calculator, select those 24 students. Same for year 13. Well, we're going to number those year 13 from, say, 85 to 140. Then, using our number generator on our calculator, we can select our 16 random students. When answering these types of questions, it's important to bullet point and give the information concisely and clearly about how the sample will be taken and the numbers involved. So in summary, we've gone through three different types of random sampling methods. Simple random sampling, systematic sampling, and stratified sampling, where in each method, every member of the population has an equal chance of being selected and a sampling frame is needed. If you liked this video, please give us a thumbs up. Leave your comments down below and subscribe to this channel so you'll be the first to know when we release our next video.